in Mississippi. Two more police officers were given lengthy sentences today for their role in a series of brutal attacks, including against two black men. They're part of a group of former officers who are being sentenced this week after pleading guilty to hor horrifying charges that include torture and sexual assault. John Yang has more. Amna, a federal judge in Mississippi, has just handed down the harshest sentence yet in a startling case of law enforcement misconduct. 40 years in prison for the fourth former deputy in the self-proclaimed goon squad in the Rankin County, Mississippi Sheriff's Department. A total of six former deputies have pleaded guilty. Federal prosecutors say that for nearly two decades, they barged into homes in the middle of the night, handcuffing and torturing occupants for information or confessions. The current charges stem from a January 2023 home invasion of the residents of Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker. The officers repeatedly shocked them with tasers, sexually assaulted them with a sex toy, and shot Jenkins in the face, nearly killing him. Parker spoke to reporters after one of the sentencing hearings. What's done uh, already, man, can't be erased, man, can't be taken back. Uh, I relive this every day. The years of brutal misconduct was documented by an investigation by Mississippi Today and the New York Times Local Investigations Fellowship. Brian Howe is an investigative reporter at Mississippi Today. He was part of this reporting team. Uh, Brian, the, the sort of the severity of this behavior and the, um, uh, the fact that it went on so long really is, is eye-grabbing, sort of very startling. Tell us how this self-proclaimed goon squad came about. How did it uh, get started? Uh, how big was it? How did they pick the people they targeted? Thanks, John. Well, it's unclear how the goon squad was actually started, but we do know that this pattern of behavior involved a core group of deputies stretching back nearly 20 years. Um, they chose their targets based on these people's alleged crimes. They mainly went after folks that they suspected of dealing or possessing methamphetamine or other drugs. Then <clears throat> after they found them, they would burst into their homes or pull them over while they were driving and begin these brutal interrogations that often involved anywhere from repeated tasings to waterboarding to burning, you name it. I mean, this has been going on for some time, say two decades. How many other cases are there out there, do you think? Well, we don't know how many cases there are out there, but we interviewed over 50 people who claimed they experienced or witnessed torture at the hands of Rangi County deputies. Uh, of those, we were able to corroborate 17 torture incidents involving 20 victims dating back 18 years. Uh, the sheriff is resisting calling calls to resign. Uh, how high up did knowledge about this go? How, uh, how, se se how much senior supervisors were aware of this? You're right, John, the, the sheriff has resisted calls to resign and has claimed numerous times that he had no knowledge of his deputy's actions. But what we found were that <clears throat> some of the highest ranking deputies at the sheriff's department were involved and in actively partaking in these torture incidents. And we spoke to multiple people who claimed they were tortured by deputies who said that they filed complaints with the department, which should have gone to the sheriff, and in some cases even reached out directly to him to notify him of his deputy's actions. What does this say about the culture of the department? Well, it says that there's potentially a deeply ingrained culture of violent misconduct at the Rankin County Sheriff's De Department. Uh, this culture has actually been referenced several times in the um, sentencing hearings this week by some of the deputies themselves, who themselves acknowledged that they were in indoctrinated into this culture and became a part of it as they went on at the sheriff's department. This, uh, the Rankin County is majority white. It sits right next to Jackson, which has one of the highest percentages of black uh, population of any um, um, good sized city in America. To what extent is there a racial dimension to this? We found that the majority of the alleged victims who were tortured by goon squad members were actually white, and we think that that's because we are looking at a majority white county. However, when uh, people of color came forward and said that they were tortured, there was often a racial aspect to the torture. They were called racial slurs. They were told to go back to Jackson, which is a common phrase, uh, referring to Jackson and how many people at the department and in Rankin County see the city as a source of crime and corruption.
Do, do you think this is going on in other counties in, uh, in Mississippi? It's hard to say. Uh, we do know that uh, across Mississippi, sheriff's departments uh, have very little to no oversight. Our team, uh, Alyssa Daly and Jerry Mitchell, have uncovered other accusations of sexual assault by sheriffs at different departments. Um, and so it's clear here that we have an issue of accountability with sheriffs generally in Mississippi. You said this has been going on for two decades. Complaints went to the sheriff's department to no avail. Uh, how did this escape the notice of statewide officials, of federal officials? That's a great, great question, John. I'd love to know that myself. Uh, we do know that a state investigation into the uh, incident involving Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker is sort of what initiated all of this in the first place. But as far as we know, uh, so far, state and federal officials only recently became aware of the conduct at the Rankin County Sheriff's Department. And the trials that have been going on, the sentencing has all been in federal court. Are any local county officials, the county prosecutor, looking into this? Yes. All of the deputies who face sentencing in federal court this week will also face another around state sentencing in the coming weeks. Brian Howie of Mississippi Today, thank you very much. Thanks, John. I appreciate it.